Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, weekly tip number 18, don't cheat on your diet. I know, it sounds kind of lame, like I think people kind of know that, but do they? Cheat meals, some plus sides, god damn, they taste so good. Oh, I was falling asleep last night, I'm in the middle of cutting right now, and I'm actually not like having a ton of cravings or, or hunger or anything like that, which is sweet, because I'm getting pretty lean and I feel fucking awesome. So, you know, uh, that's really going well. But like right before I actually fall asleep, I was like, Chinese food. Damn. How do they make it taste so good? I know the answer is MSG. So feel free to still slide that into the comments. But in any case, oh, oh, where's Italian guy, Mike? Marron, fucking cheat meal. Forget the Chinese. Real Italian. Oh, Gabagool or whatever shit I heard in The Sopranos. I don't even know what that is. In any case, cheat meals, they taste super great. I mean, they really do. And that's a plus. It makes, your, makes you happier, you know, for the five minutes that you're actually wolfing it down. And they can re-energize you for like at least the day after. And it'll kind of make you feel like you're revamped in your dieting efforts. You're like, I got my cheat meal. I'm good. I can do another bit, a uh, few days or weeks or whatever of grinding until I get another cheat meal. Maybe. However, there is a darker side that I think more people encounter than not encounter. First, cheat meals can make you gain tons of water weight. It's temporary, doesn't mean anything, but it can, you, you know, you go to the gym or you look at your physique, remember you're in the middle of cut, it's otherwise it's not called a cheat meal, it's just you're having a fun meal. Uh, gee whiz, it does like really not great things to your motivation. If you're like looking lean, 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 you take a cheat meal and you wake up the next day, you're like, oh my God, I'm a bloated mess. Like it's tough, right? It can be really tough. And worse, there's worse. Cheat meals in many people, not all people, have this weird effect where they have an in enhancing effect on your cravings. You would think that a cheat meal would just stamp of approval, cravings are good, you sort of uh, check that box and you're good for a while. And in many people that does happen, they eat their pizza or half pizza or whatever, and they're like, ah, I'm over pizza, I can diet for another three weeks, no problem. For many people, they're so hungry and so sort of strung out that they have their cheat meal and even towards the end of the cheat meal, like the last two slices, they start to eat them slower. They're like, this is so pleasurable. I don't want it to end. And then as soon as it ends, like, Jesus, when do I get my next cheat meal? They're so excited for this incredibly amazing food that it, it does a few really bad things. It makes the rest of the diet until you get your next cheat meal, uh, cheat meal miserable by comparison. It also makes you literally rebound more cravings and hunger. So the next few days after the cheat meal, your hunger was worse than before you got the cheat meal, which is like, if we're using the cheat meal to make the diet easier, and then the diet is harder because of the cheat meal, are we kind of shooting ourselves in the foot? Like, isn't that really stupid? And you can end up in the cycle where you have the cheat meal and you're, for the first half of the cheat meal, elated, super happy. The last half of physically eating the food, you get nervous. They're like, oh shit, like this is it. You know, it's like um, if you ever have like fun with your friends when you were a little kid and you, your parents were going to pick you up and take you home, the sleepover was over. Like the last half hour of playing, you were like, ah, dang it. Like, ah, uh, it's about to be over. I'm having the time of my life. And then your, your mom shows up and like, okay, Billy, time to go home. And you're like, no, and you cry. I don't know. That was how my childhood was. I'm just kidding. I never had any childhood friends. The uh, robots that designed me make sure I had those simulations uploaded. So I feel like you. In any case, kind of a similar idea here. You finish your cheat meal or as you're finishing it, you're like, oh my God, like after this, there's no more happiness for the foreseeable future. And then worst problem if you have scheduled cheat meals or you take one every few days or a few weeks or something, you spend a lot of time looking forward to the cheat meal and contemplating and uh, sort of really accepting your misery of not having a current cheat meal. Like your next cheat meal is on Friday night. Dude, Thursday's a long fucking day of like, damn it, can I just teleport to Friday? I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. Interestingly enough, and I don't want to put too fine a point on this, but the promise of something really good in the future and the temporary relief of stress 
is a, is a tool that intelligence agencies around the world use to actually break people and get information out of them. If they just beat the shit, especially out of really trained spies, if they just beat the shit out of you and blare loud music and pour water all over you, uh, a lot of people who are well, well trained and just hardy individuals genetically to begin with, they just harden up and they're like, fucking kill me. I don't care. You're not getting shit. They're more clever than that, usually, the intelligence agencies, what they'll do is they'll torture the fuck out of you or whatever, psychological torture, same, same, and you harden up. And then just as you're almost too hard to crack, they come in, they sit down, hey, here's a drink, here's some food, relax, it's okay. We're on your side, it's fine. Eat the food, relax, turn off the loud, blurry music, whatever. Can you guys uh, tell I've seen one too many spy movies? But, but legit, this is how it works. And then when you relax and... Maybe you talk to them a little bit and then you're civil. They explicitly tell you, hey, listen, anytime you want to like break us off with the secrets and let us know what you know, we're just literally never going to torture you again. It'll just be like, you're good. We might even let you go. Like, just, just tell us what we need. This doesn't have to continue. Here's more food. Have more drink. It's okay. Like, you want a cigarette? Here's a cigarette. In all the spy movies, they all smoke cigarettes. I don't know. If I was getting beat to death, maybe I'd try a cigarette too. In any case, that promise of better, that promise of relief, they say, hey, do you want to tell us stuff? And you're like, no, fuck you guys. They get right to beating you again and you don't sleep for a while. But then you have it in your head that if you give anything, the relief will come. And I know it's a stretch and none of us are warriors or spies. Well, maybe some of you are, but I sure as hell I'm not. Most people watching this channel are probably just trying to get jacked. That mini, 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 teeny, teeny, tiny, way smaller version of that really does happen in the human mind if you do cheat meals. Not to everyone. Most people, I think, or many people, they're just totally fine. They have their pizza. They feel great. They move on. If you're one of those people, this whole lecture just like in one ear, out the other. But if you feel me, you know what I'm talking about. You look forward to this cheat meal and it actually just makes you miserable 95% of the diet and 5%, which is the first half of the physical time that you're eating the food, you're like, oh my God, you're in paradise. Okay, that's a shitty trade-off. And if that's a shitty trade-off for you, stop flying Icarus-like into the sun and stop doing this to yourself. It's a nasty cycle and you have to break the cycle in order to actually get away from it. And breaking the cycle is tough because you have to say, you know what, I'm just not doing any cheat meals. Here's a better idea because we can't all grind and, and, and diet forever. Sometimes you have a 16-week diet. If you just cut the calories all the time, you're just going to fatigue right out and you're just going to fail. So if you need to reduce fatigue, you don't actually have to do it with cheat meals. Here's my better recommendation. You're cutting, everything's going super well, and you get super fatigued, super flat, super depleted. You need a break. No worries. You take your normal diet, all your protein, carbs, fats. You take your carbs and your fats and you bring up those calories so that you're at maintenance. You're at maintenance calories for three to four days. I know it's a long time, but it's all clean food. It's all diet food, just more. And here's the thing, when you're really fucking hungry on a crazy diet, uh, yeah, you're gonna like, you're, uh, more brown rice, holy shit, somebody throw a fucking parade. But three or four days of that means you get over the novelty after a while and your glycogen stores really fill up and your brain chemistry really changes to one of like, oh, like I'm feeling pretty good. Your fatigue starts to fall. And now you're having great training. You feel really like you've pushed really hard in this diet to get the fat off. And then you sort of pull away and let everything refill and reset. And then three or four days later, you introduce more low days again, more regular diet days, pull out the carbs and fats like you're supposed to or anyway, a bunch of them, get into that deficit again and grind out for another anywhere between three or four days to two weeks, depending on how you're doing things, two or three weeks or something. And then another three or four days of refeed. I don't like cheat meals. I'm not a big fan of daily, re like once a day or sorry, like a day at a time refeed, but three or four days, geez, it really reduces the fatigue. The, the direct analogy here is kind of like a deload, slightly different time scale, but like a deload is not one fucking light day. A deload is a whole week of easy lifting. And after a deload, like after one light day, if you're really fatigued and from, the, from gym training, you're like, all right, I feel a little better, I guess. But someone's like, all right, sweet. He, you know, heavy lifting tomorrow. You're like, fucking Christ, I'm still like barely under, like barely above water here. If you take a week of deloading, man, you feel like a trillion bucks and you can grind for another one to two months. No, no problem. A similar thing works here. Three or four days, back to maintenance, clean food only. So there's not that like addictive, like, oh my God, I want as many Cheetos as possible. I swear to God, it works. Give it a shot. A lot of top bodybuilders use this already, whether they know it or not, whether it's intentional or not. It's like the push-pull system. It works really well. Give it some thought. And listen, last thing I'll say, if you're at a CIA black site, 
if you're getting tortured, do like a few Dr. Mike blinks, the weird ones that I do. And I can tell through like quantum tunneling of the universe if you're doing that. I'll come through, I'll rescue you, or we'll get pizza together. See you next week.